Is there a prize for the chili cook-off? Because I won two years in a row. Not here, somewhere else. I won two years in a row, so I'm just saying. Is there a prize? I plan on winning again. I won't tell you what dish my stuff will be in, but am I enrolled already? Oh, enroll me. I'm going to cook some chili. love chili. I love cooking chili. Yeah, Jesus, how you want this to go this morning? You have your Bible turn to James chapter 1 verse 6 we're going to talk just for a few minutes this morning then we're going to go on to getting in the water and watching what God's doing through our faith thank you Lord. James chapter 1 verse 6 it says let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the winds. Let him ask in faith, without any doubting. Let's turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God, but that the things which are seen are not made by the things which are visible. Faith is a key part of our life, guys, a key part of our prayers. Understanding who God is. Knowing that when you pray and you don't physically receive it or you don't see something in front of your eyes that, that having the faith that God's going to answer your prayer according to His will. We're not supposed to ask amiss or ask for things that, that we don't need. And that's why I just tried to, I'm trying to fashion myself and just praising Him and glorifying Him. Because the Word says He knows my every need before I even ask. So why even ask Him when He knows what you have need of? I'm just praising Him in that need and glorifying Him and He answers that need. Verse 4, it says, By faith Abel offered up to God a more excellent sacrifice by being obedient to what God had asked for. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear to partake, prepare an ark for the saving of his house. I mean, imagine Noah. Never rained before. The water, the ground was, was, was watered by the mist that come up. The fog never had it rained and all of a sudden God's telling him it's going to flood and the earth's going to flood with water imagine the faith it took for him to, to build an ark knowing something was going to happen and he'd never seen it before and I believe that's what God's doing here he, by faith we need to know that God's doing a move in Martinsville by something we've never seen before a way we've never seen it before that's, and that's okay the Word of God says you know a man by their fruits. This is fruit. This is fruit. What you're doing, the people you're ministering to is fruit. Keep doing it. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out into a place which he would receive as an inheritance. By faith, Sarah received the strength to conceive when she was 90. She was past the age to bear children, but by faith, she had a child.
By faith, Abraham was tested by taking his son Isaac up to the mountains to offer him up to the Lord. He didn't know that God was not going to take his son. He just knew he was supposed to be obedient. And by faith, he was obedient. He knew how good his God is and how much his God loves him. By faith, he stepped out and offered up his son. And God gave him back to him. Verse 30, 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. They passed through the Red Sea on, on dry land. The sea parted and they walked across. By faith, they did that. It wasn't by praying, it was by faith. They go hand in hand. Though. And by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after marching around them for seven days. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. How many of you have prayed prayers and then when you, the prayer was answered, you're, it moves you, it wows you because the prayer was answered. We've all did that. Like, wow, God, you answered the prayer. You asked for something, he gives it to you. You're like, oh, wow, like he wouldn't do it. Story in the Bible, I'm going to go briefly through this. And if you guys read your Bible, it's a good story. Acts chapter 12. It's a really good story. You have a Herod who's a wild, wicked man. Kills one of the disciples, kills James with a sword. And saw how pleasing it was to the people that he killed James. So he's like, I'm going to grab Peter as well, and I'm going to, I'm going to hang him out to dry. So he grabs Peter, he puts him in prison. I'm sure Peter was a praying man. I'm sure he was praying that, that God would free him from that, that setting that he was in. <coughs> So they put these four squads of, of army, uh, army men around him, four squads around him. He just had him covered through two different gate systems, actually three, to the city. Deep down in this, in this place where they had him held before they take him out and prayed him out in front of everyone to kill him as well. And then you've got all these Christians over here that are praying, this church is praying for, for Peter to be released, for God to move, for God to do what he's going to do. The angel of the Lord comes to Peter in the night. The light of heaven shines down in the cell. Peter has soldiers on both sides of him, chained to both of them. The chains dropped off. The angel kicks him in the side. He was sound asleep. Kicks him in the side, gets him up. Says, get your clothes on. Get your sandals on. Let's go. Takes him through the first gate. Peter's just not even knowing what's going on. Am I in a daze? Am I in a dream? Am I in a vision? What's going on? Kicks him through the first gate, then goes through the second gate, and they're still going. And all of a sudden, there's a third gate there to the city, and the gate opens up on its own. This is how God works. It opens up on its own. He walks through that gate and walks down one block, and the angel disappears, and, and Peter finally comes to himself and says, wow, that, that really was an angel. God really did answer my prayer. So he goes over to the house, Mary's house, and he goes and they're all sitting there praying at the house. And he goes in there and he starts banging on the door. And, and a young girl, Rhoda, come to the door and, and, uh, and she heard his voice. And she was so excited because she heard his voice. She's kind of like you when she gets excited. And she heard his voice and she was jumping up and down. And she ran back to the disciples. She said, Peter's here. And they said, no, you're mad. He's not here. It's probably his angel. He's not here. She said, no, he's really here. He's really here. no. You know they've been on their knees praying all night long for God to answer their prayer. And here Peter's knocking at the door. The answer to the prayer is right there at the door. But they're like, no, you're mad. That can't happen. That's an angel. And that's what we do sometimes. We, we, we pray for things, but then we don't want to receive the answer the way that God wants to give it to us. He wants to answer our prayers. Even if he has to shine a light, let people sleep, break off chains, walk us through two barricades of, of, of soldiers and through a gate that he opens, we don't even have to touch. That's how he wants to answer your prayers. He's for you. God is for you. This little baby that's going to get in the water, he is for Hudson. 
We don't always see the, 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 we don't always see the outcome, always, of the manifestation of, of what God's doing. I'm still deaf in one ear, half deaf in the other. Am I healed? I am. Because Jesus says I am. Will I see it here? Maybe not. Will I see it in heaven? I will for sure. That's not for me to be concerned about. I know that I'm healed. I'm taking on that healing. And whenever it manifests, it manifests. I'm not going to be down, depressed, discouraged over because I'm not able to hear and not able to get a song on tune or, or when I mess all that up. I'm, I'm not worried about all that. I'm worried about being in the center of His will. Having the faith to do what He's called me to do. Standing in that place that He's called me to stand. And that's have the faith that He's called us to have. And we pray that faith combined with those prayers will move a mountain. Any mountain that's in your life, it'll move. It has to. It's the Word of God. It's the truth. And the truth will set you free. If you're bound, the truth will set you free. Peter was set free from the truth. The enemy, got, the enemy was in front of him. The soldiers were in front of him, but he was freed from them. And God made a way. Same as the ark. God opened his door. And God closed that door. He wants to open and close the doors for you. But you have to be obedient to hear him and listen to what he's saying to you. Youth is so vital for you this day to stand in the gap for the other teams that are around you. Standing in that gap for them. Because they're going to listen to you before they listen to me. They're going to listen to you. They're going to understand you. When you live that life, when you live that lifestyle, when you make Jesus first in your life, they're going to listen to that more than they're going to listen to me. They might listen to me because they're made to. And then as the Lord moves on them, then, then maybe they'll want to. But before that, you have to be their light. You have to be the light that shines in their life. You have to be their Jesus before they really find Jesus. Their encounter is going to be with you first, in most cases, before it becomes with Him. Are you guys ready? Does uh, Shelly, you want to escort them around to the water? Do we have someone getting in the water helping them? Okay. You getting in with those clothes on? Going home cold? <sighs> By faith, this baby is touched. I remember. I remember when they. I remember when they called me. I'm heading to the hospital called me and said that he had already coded. I wasn't having it. Wasn't having it. And no, we're not going to do that. He's going to live. He's not going to die. Still believe that today. He's going to live. Regardless, either way. See, we have to come in the mindset, regardless of either way, he's going to live. Whether it's here or whether it's there, he's going to live. We have to come to those kind of terms in our mind and our thinking, not being grieved over things that we shouldn't be grieved over. But understanding the truth, the heavenly truth of what things are, what reality really is. Not this virtual world that they're trying to take us to where everything's all perfect and great. I can't say their names or they'll cut me off. But there's people that are trying to take you into a virtual world where that's all you do is you go in that virtual reality and everything's just hunky-dory. You know what? You live in a real world with real problems, real crime, real things happen. But you can be so heavenly mind, minded that living in this world does not affect you in any way, shape, or form. The only thing that moves you is God. Not man, not the things that are going on in the world. It don't move you. It might move you to, to press in more or dig in more, dive in more to him, moving toward him because of the things that are going on. But it ain't going to move you and shake you and make you want to walk away from God. It just, it just won't happen if your mind is set right. 
So we're going to pray for this little baby this morning. We're not going to pray. We're just going to believe Jesus is meeting people in the water. He's touching people in the water. So we have clothes back there, um, change of clothes. So if anyone wants to get into water this morning, um, go back there and they'll get you ready. We feel like that, that um, or if you want to come up here, we can pray for you either way. It doesn't matter. The water up here, it doesn't matter. We're just believing. But this is what believing is. Sometimes we're not going to see the answer now. But our faith still has to hold tight to that. So you got Ty back there. I see Ty up walking around. I see that. That young boy wrote a book on his second book. He don't look at things in, in the way that we look at things. He's an amazing young man. Not being able to walk, but we can see him that way. We can understand that he is called to be that way, that Jesus sees him that way, that in heaven he is walking. Not get discouraged about it here and down about it and depressed about it. Why? Those are things from the enemy. I made him laugh this morning. I told him Bob was... Did you see that, Bob? Where's Bob at? <laughs> oh, hey. Did you see that? Hey, look at him. He's laughing now. <laughs> it's the way that we look at things. How, how, how's your perspective of things? You can be down, depressed, and broke if you want. But who wants to be that way? I want to be rich in him. It ain't about money. It's about Jesus. It's about what Jesus is doing. It's about how he wants to touch you. How he wants to, to manifest. It's, it's whatever he wants to do. If he wants to manifest that healing today, he can. Or, or if he wants to take his son home, he can. He's right always. We have to get that in our heads. Jesus is right every single time. He knows best in every situation. And he's right every time. So really your problems are only problems because you think they're problems. He doesn't see it as problems. Look at that little beautiful girl. Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember I was at the hospital and they said that, that he, had, he had coded and, and, and I got there and, and uh, Lifeline was coming out with him and, and uh, they were bringing him out as I was walking in and I just prayed over him as he left and then watched the helicopter leave and, and uh, so I got, to, I got to go. I think I got to, I don't know if I got to hold him before you did or touch him before you did. I'm not sure. Yeah. And um, I think I got to hold him before his grandma got to hold him. And um, when I go to the hospital, and I don't know if you know this or you might know this, but uh, when it was at the hospital, um, they said that I could touch him. You know, so I went to touch him and to pray over him. And, and uh, Matt, you were, you were turned a different direction. And he, and, 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 and he went <gasps> like that, and his chest just rose up. And it, it almost it, it scared me for a moment because I thought I, I shocked him or something, but I don't know if just God touched him. And he... <gasps> And then he goes through his surgeries and he just, they did, they did a small stint. It's called a, I don't know what it's called, a shunt. And it's a little small. And they, they, he was in there for a little bit to see if it was going to stick or not and if it was going to like move around and it, and it did well. But now he's in the second phase and it's okay because doctors are awesome. God created them to be awesome to understand and learn the things that, that, that we need, that we need um, healing from. They, they learn all these things and, I, and I'm so grateful for them. It's another way that God moves through doctors to, to heal people. I didn't, did anybody, is anybody else getting in the water? We have clothes. Kevin? Kevin? Can we get in the water? Anybody else? You want to get in? Debbie? Come on. Debbie, you can do it. Come on, get in. We need to watch what he's going to do. It's going to be a testimony. You know how I'm not going to make you. (laughs) 
Yeah. So let's just extend our hands this, this way. Listen, it's nothing we do, nothing we say, nothing that we're right now. It's what Jesus is doing. It's not about us. It's not about our words. If it was about our words, then we would teach each other how to pray. Jesus said, just believe that he's coming. Believe that he's real. Believe that he's true. We don't have classes on prayer. We have classes on just sitting still and listening to his voice. Boy, you are amazing and God loves you so much. He's proud of you. He's got a call for you. He's got something for you that he wants. You're going to touch people's lives. You're going to minister to people. He's on fire for you, boy. I believe he's burning up everything in your heart that's not of heaven. Everything that's not supposed to be there like that. He's burning that up and he's changing it. He's making it new. He's creating new things in you. You're his son. And he loves you. He does love you. And I love you. I'm proud of you. We bring him over here. Yeah. Word of God says, anoint with oil. Touch him. Yeah. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you, Jesus, for your son. Thank you for healing right now. Thank you for touching him right now. Praise you, Father, right now. Little Hudson, bless his heart. Bless his father. These parents here have been some of the strongest parents I've ever met. Their faith has been so strong. They wobbled a few times, but their faith was strong. They know. You guys all going to go in together? Get a a self-immerse together? Will he be able to? Uh, well, you want, <laughs> he's like, ready, ready, we're just going straight down and what does it say, ready, one, two, three, Jesus, yeah, okay. yeah, it's good, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, yeah, oh yeah, that's good, wow, that was good. Wow. That was awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You guys just hang out a minute in the water. Can can you use his camera and get a picture? See, by faith, he's healed. We believe it. Nothing else. We don't believe nothing else other than that. Kevin's going to get in the water. Kevin's never been in the water before. He's been here for a while. It's his first time getting in the water. And he's, uh, you know, one, one of the things is when, when God called me to do this, he, he told me to protect the platform. But, you know, I've, I've had people come and deep in sin running video cameras that doesn't bother me. Platform, I've got to guard that. But they can do all that. And they can serve in other ways. And uh, Kevin's had some back yeah yeah Kevin's had some back problems and uh um and uh so he's stamping in for that for his problems his back problems yeah yeah these are his two daughters anybody else want to get in be good. It's going to be good. 
Pulse 98, so it's pretty warm. <laughs> We have the water immersion coming up um, last Sunday of the month. Yeah. And um, so. What about that? Yeah, you can give him. If he wants to. Dan, you want to testify, Dan? Okay. You can stand right there. You can stay right there. Okay. Is this on? Yeah. Good morning. Um, I've been battling cancer for almost four years now. Um, On March 18th of this year, I had a PET scan. I've had a a bunch of scans, PET scans, CT scans, and it showed that the cancer had showed up in the windpipe. There were three tumors in there that we knew about. But then a fourth one that they thought appeared. So on March, that was on the 18th, on March 27th, I got into the water. And as the, as the system, medical system goes, you have to wait till they'll say it's okay to get another scan. Well, it took a long time. So when I got my second scan, from March 18th, it showed that the three tumors that we knew about had reduced better than half in size and half in activity. And the fourth tumor that they thought was a fourth tumor was inconclusive. Now along with that, Jason and Shelley don't know this, but about April, after I was in the water, my daughter Kylie gave me a healing cloth. And she said, Dad, sleep with that on your chest every night. And I have done that. But in April, and I go back two years from that, I developed a hernia by carrying boards on my shoulder up a ladder. And I lost my balance a little bit, and I caught myself. And I tore that in the abdomen. And in April, I felt that tear again. So when I went to bed that night, I called before I left, or before I went to sleep that night, I called Kylie, and I said, you know, I'm going to have to call that surgeon tomorrow and get an appointment. I think I tore that hernia open. And that night, when I went to bed, I laid that cloth on my chest. And in about the middle of the night, I woke up and I just moved that cloth to the, to the spot. Fell back asleep. Within a couple hours, I guess, I get a nudge. And a heat sensation goes throughout my body. So then I fell back asleep. And I get up the next day, I'm in the gym at 5.30 in the morning, I'm working out, I'm doing all those things, I go to work, I'm picking things up, I have no pain. So, I live alone, nobody nudged me, but Jesus. So, that's where I'm at. And I'm just, I just like what Jason said, I am healed. Even though these tumors are still here, they have reduced in size and activity. And I'm believing it's, it's over. Thank you, Dan. We uh, love Dan. He travels twice a month down here from Anderson. He says oh. there's 50, 100 churches what, he what passes. City? What city? Anderson. How far is that? hour and a half. Yeah. 
Yeah. Fuck off. So we love seeing him. We love um, just his presence he brings, his encouragement. Bye, guys. Have a great week. All right. Yeah. Kevin's ready. All right, that's it, guys. Then you can go eat lunch after this. Yeah. Well, Kevin, what do you want Jesus to do today? <laughs> Everything. Yeah. You got to hold your nose? No. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we just thank you for Kevin, Lord. We thank you for his heart. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in him, God, and through him. Thank you for his servant heart, Lord. Heart to serve. Serve your people. Father, I thank you that he's getting in the water right now and, and believing that you're touching him, believing that you're ministering to him, believing that you're doing a miracle in him right now, Jesus. For his back, for his finances, every aspect of his life, Lord, we thank you that you're touching it. Anything that's not of you, Jesus, we ask that you leave it in the water. Kevin, that you leave it in the water. Let him have every bit of it. Every bit of bitterness, unforgiveness, die out right now. Give him everything. Watch him change your life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh. We're going to go one more time. We're going to go one more time. Three seconds this time. Thirty seconds. <laughs> Three, three seconds. <laughs> put your, take him down, put your foot on his chest. Yeah. Yeah, ready. Jesus' name. Three, all the way, all the way. One, two. Okay, there's bubbles. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You good? <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Have a tremendous day. Tell somebody you love them. And uh, have, have, just have a good week. Bless you. Come back next week. Bring someone with you. <laughs>